This is Helen with one more video for week one of the D4L content creation module. This final video addresses concerns around usability and accessibility of your multimedia content. In the foundation and diversity modules, we've already talked a bit about the importance of both usability and accessibility. Some will show these two concepts in a Venn diagram with an overlap in the middle. However, when we look at these from the perspective of universal design for learning, we can think of accessibility as a part of usability. To be considered usable, content must be accessible to all users. Conversely, just because the content is accessible doesn't mean it's usable. Usability means that the use of a resource is effective and satisfying, going beyond mere access. Accessibility is focused on making sure that people with disabilities can perceive, understand, navigate, and interact with the content. In fact, some institutions may be required to comply with standards like Section 508 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973. Rather than thinking of accessibility as something extra, adding alternative formats to fix something later, you should consider it from the beginning of developing your content and create content that is as inclusive as possible from the start. Remember the personas you developed during the community module? Keep their needs in mind when you're choosing tools and formats and structuring your content, the devices they use, the formats they need, their attention span, their schedules, their distractions. This may include a range of devices from screen readers or other adaptive devices to smartphones. Put yourself in their shoes and imagine multiple learners' different workflows to go through all the content for your instruction. This slide shows one great approach to accessibility, which you can easily remember as POOR, from the W3C Web Accessibility Initiative. I'll just highlight a few of these, but this is also in your workbook, and there's a link in the additional resources. Depending on your objectives and what media you're leaning toward, you may need to provide a transcript of multimedia content, including a simple text-only option of the script for screen readers. Add captioning to multimedia content. Provide multiple formats, such as audio narration or downloadable content for offline viewing in addition to or instead of streaming content. Here are several important factors for operability. Simplify your language to make it easier to understand. Pay attention to all of these factors. While these may be necessary for people with certain impairments, they can also be extremely helpful for people with other factors to consider. For example, captions may be necessary for someone with a hearing impairment, but can also be helpful to someone who is not a native English speaker, or a parent who is trying to learn from your instruction while their child is going to sleep. Audio narration may help somebody with a visual impairment, but it can also help somebody who needs to listen to instructional materials while driving on a long commute. These factors will affect both your choice of tools for creation and services for access. To make sure it's possible to provide the options you've determined you need. There are websites listed in the additional resources where you can check to make sure your website is accessible. Use these tools throughout your process to identify any problems rather than waiting until the end. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering what online content could cause a seizure, from this poor list, visit the additional resources for some examples of bad web design. In your workbook, we've provided a checklist for evaluating usability of content as you go forward. Here we'll share the different categories in the list and then highlight some examples. Some of these features relate to individual pieces of content, but some relate to the environment through which the content is shared. Right now, we'll focus only on the former, but remember to consider these in the course management and capstone modules as well. First, Color and contrast are very important to help your learners view your content easily. Text and images should always have high contrast, consistent styles and color palettes, and links that are easy to identify as links. For example, can you read this text with a light font against white? How about the next row with a light font against a background color? Or the next row? with black text against a dark background color. It's better to stick with high contrast, 
dark text on light or vice versa. Black on white is the safest of all. When you already know what you're reading, you may not be as attentive to this, but keep your users with low vision in mind. What about links? A link that says click here won't be clear to your users, especially if they're using assistive devices. They need some context about where they'll go if they click. Also, a link in an inconsistent color may not be obvious to users as a link, especially if there are places where colored text is used for emphasis instead of a link. It's better to stick close to common conventions for formatting links. Blue text with underlining is the most recognizable. How you choose to present your text can also affect your learner's experience. That fancy font you like might not be so easy to read. Also, you can keep your learner's attention both with concise language and use of bold or headings to chunk text on a page. Your choices for layout and navigation can make it easier for your learners to follow along and find their way from one activity to another. Putting the important information up front, not crowding the page with too much information, making contact info easy to find, and simple navigation options all help learners get where you want them to go. For example, it's best to put your most important content above the fold. This relates back to the contiguity principle from the previous video and to the idea of catching and focusing your learner's attention, so I'm showing you this slide again. Engage your learners by showing some of the most important details near the top of the screen when they land there. Don't count on them to scroll down. If nothing catches their attention, they might not bother. This term originally referred to the top section of the front page of a newspaper, the part that shows on the top when it's folded. This has carried over into screen technology. These are just a few examples of ways to address accessibility and usability. Be sure to visit the full checklist and the additional resources to explore this topic further. Finally, your learners may get frustrated if the site loads slowly or requires plugins that they have to take extra time to download or configure. When you think about more complex features, ask yourself if it is necessary to deliver the content and base your decisions on that answer. Now that you've considered best practices for creating content, you're ready to start drafting content of your own.